Kotlin has type inference. Let's talk about exactly what that means. Now, at a real high level, what that really means is that Kotlin can infer a particular type of variable. Now, Kotlin is a strongly typed language that means that each variable has a particular type. The compiler is going to check those types, and we have a lot of compiler things that the compiler does that makes our life a lot easier. And one of those things is type checking. However, in traditional languages such as Java, you have to inform the compiler, here is the type that I'm going to use, and then you can start using the variable. Kotlin has type inference. So here we have a variable or value by the name of name. And it contains the value of Dawn, and we have another value here which contains the value of age, and this could also be a var, it doesn't matter if it's a val or a, a, val or a var. Kotlin will infer both. And then what we can see here, just through the help inside of IntelliJ, is that Colin has already inferred that the name variable here is a string. And the reason how it's doing that is it's looking on the right hand side of the equal sign and saying, well, you are, you are, you have a, you want me to declare a variable and you want me to call it a name, okay, and then you wanna assign the value Dawn, and I already know the value Dawn is a string, and so I'm gonna put a string inside of the name so that means that most likely that name is a string. So I'm gonna infer the name is a string, okay. And the same thing goes for over here. Uh, you want the value 33, and 33 is an integer, and you wanna shove it into the name, excuse me, into the age variable. Well, I'm gonna assume that that age variable is actually gonna be an integer. And as we can see here from the help that the compiler is actually getting this right. And this does us a few things. It allows us to not have to declare the variable. Now we could, of course, just say, hey, this is gonna be a string. But we're actually kind of just writing a bunch of code that we don't really need to write. Um, so we don't really don't have to do this. Now, that's the really nice thing about us inside of Kotlin that with variables, we can infer them automatically. Now, there is a caveat here. If you remember, late initialization, so we have a var, and we could say maybe your favorite food. Uh, you could say something like this, well, I'm going to do this later. And again, late in it means, hey, comp hey, Kotlin, don't worry about this yet. I'm going to go ahead and populate the food variable. I'm just not gonna do it yet. I'm gonna do it somewhere later down the line, but don't worry, I got this covered, I'll handle it. So that's what we're telling Kotlin at this point in time. However, Kotlin says, well, I can infer the, the type of the variable if you give it to me during the initialization which is what we're doing here. We're allowing the initialization of the variable to occur and therefore type inference can take place. So names like, okay, that's gonna be a string because you're basically setting it equal to a string and age is gonna be equivalent to an integer because well, you're setting it equal to 33. But late in it food, I don't know what that's gonna be yet because somewhere further down the line here in our application, who knows if it's inside of an if statement, inside of a catch block, who, who knows where it's at but you're gonna set it somewhere. And I don't know what it is yet, so you have to tell me. So in this instance, I actually have to define the type for the compiler to be happy. So I cannot infer a type with a late initialized variable. Now this also works too if you have, for, for example, let's say we wanna use a name that's reversed and we have a method which we have down here at the bottom and this method Right here, we'll just take in a string and it will reverse it. Now, of course, we could do that by hand, but this is just to illustrate the the concept that you can have a function that also returns something. And so we'll take in that, we'll take in the name. And what will happen is Kotlin will then go ahead and, and take a look at this function here. And will say, all right, well, you want to use name reversed. Okay, well, I'm going to go look at this function name reversed. And, and then I'm going to see, oh, name reversed actually returns a string. Oh, okay. So in that case, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and make reversed a string. So again, kind of as real quick, just kind of Kotlin says, I'm gonna go look at this function here. I see it's a string and then, okay, cool. Looks like I'm gonna go ahead and make this reverse value a string. So pretty simple. Um, and what it's, what it's doing behind the scenes, so you can do that. Kotlin will also do some inferring too. So let's say we have an amount, two prices. So price equals 10. Now this is gonna be an integer and I have price two. And whoops, so this might be Price two, and these could be vowels as well. So 20.01. And then I say, all right, print line price one. And I say print line price two. And 
if we look at what the compiler is telling us here is it well price is an integer and price two is a double and then what happens if we initialize another one and we say this is a total and the total is going to be the price plus price two now what's going to happen here we're combining two different types well this is a double and this is an integer well Kotlin's like well what am i going to do here well Kotlin is smart enough to know the compiler is well you're adding an integer and a, and a double so most likely you want the precision of this to be a double because otherwise you would lose some precision if we just stuck with an integer meaning that we would end up with you know what would this be it would be 30 most likely so at this point in time total is going to end up being a double which we can see here from you know, the ide help so kotlin is then doing type inference based upon a calculation of an integer and a double now in other languages you might have to do particular types of casting to make sure that you don't lose any precision because if you didn't do the casting you might have precision problems meaning you're losing decimals etc but kotlin is smart enough to figure some of these things out here so this is basically in essence how, what type of inference is and so you can get inference when you are initializing variables uh, and then different types are returned etc are going to be inferred you know such as the function name is here and kotlin will both go basically look throughout the execution path of the code say all right what is being returned here okay it's being set into this into this other value up here okay that sounds good so it looks like you know reversed is that point is now going to be a string and we can go ahead and infer that for you uh, for some reason though if we are using again a late in it and we're going to go ahead and use a var and have our favorite food we will have to actually declare the type when we declare it because kotlin's not smart enough to know hey I don't know what this is going to be and because it's a strongly typed language we can't just kind of let this type just kind of be floating around in nowhere and we don't know what it is so you do have to declare the type here if it's going to be late initialized and that's how type inference works in kotlin